Hi guys, Brian out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Moon Boots and Super Fastball. This is a this is a video that's been very long overdue, um, and I do apologize for that. But we're going to get it out of the way today. Uh, Moon Boots and Super Fastball are probably two of the coolest and most important tricks in the entire game. Um, so to start things off, uh, oh, I'm just I'm going to be covering the bulk of the first part of uh, the beacon. I'm going to be talking about Super Fastball, the uh, Grab Star Jump, and then I'll talk a bit about the fight afterwards as well. That isn't going to be that that won't be as important. I'm, I'm mainly here to talk about Moon Boots and Super Fastball. So Moon Boots, in case you guys haven't seen my tutorial, um, is uh, a trick where we disembark from Brute while he's still in his flight animation, and that basically reduces Cooper's gravity by 15% and allows us to do a lot of crazy things. To set up for Moon Boots, um, you might have seen my old video I did it on this ramp right here. What you're actually going to do is, uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. We're going to be doing it on the store right here. So uh, I would, I like to do is I like to line up right here in the middle with this thing. And then you just run straight into the wall and then you're going to fly and then we'll disembark. You can also do it in the corner over here like above these dead bodies, which there is a lot of. Um, some people do that, but uh, I, I just do it right here. Fly, disembark. Oh, there we go. Um, it can be kind of tricky, so you just kind of have to you have to look for it, and then you'll see that my gravity is greatly reduced. Similar to going open the door. Um, so you're gonna uh, you'll have to you have to mess with it. Find which one works for you. Um, either one, either one works. Uh, but some people have trouble with the middle of the door. Some people have trouble with the corner. So you just gotta figure out what works for you. Hey Tasky, how you doing? So if you guys have ever, I don't, if you haven't seen Fastball Skip before, what's gonna happen, or Super Fastball rather, what's gonna happen is BT is literally going to throw us, and uh, we're gonna hold jump, and again, that's hold, jump, hold. And we're gonna fly across literally this whole map. It's, it's, it's easily the coolest trick in the game, um, if you haven't seen it before. So what we're, I'm gonna do it the proper way first off, and I'm gonna show you how to, um, I'm going to show you how to do it the proper way, or the most optimized way, and then after that, uh, I will go over backup strats. Okay, so. Wind, three knots. Hi, Tasky. How you doing, dude? Range ninety-five meters. Projectile. I think I have a quick save here, but in case I don't, I'm gonna make another one. Trust me. Oh, I almost, I almost started doing it. I've been I've been running a lot of all helmets actually. I I totally strafed that like I was doing all helmets. I'm used to the all helmet super fastball, which is quite different from the any percent super fastball. So That's okay. And so that is that is super fastball, uh, kind of all at once. A pretty, I mean, we got from all the way over there to over here, and you know, I, I mean, that feels like you know, 15, 20 seconds. So, yeah, I I did the all helmets super fastball. I'm so I've been running just all helmets for the past like week. So, anyway, it's a pretty it's a pretty sick trick. So let's go over so let's go over how this is done. Again, I'm gonna go over over, over the optimal way, and then we'll go over the backup strats. So. I'm going to be loading this quick save over and over right here just to discuss this first part. So what you need to do at the very start is you need to hold space, right? You hold space so BT throws you. As soon as he throws you, you're going to want to strafe to the right of the crane. That's that's right over here. You want to strafe to this part of the crane. Um, you're going to want to do that because if you go too far to the left on that side, you will actually miss the trigger that sits right here and you'll soft lock. Um, and when you soft lock, that makes the, this jump over here like a lot more difficult. So... Um, just jump to the left. It's possible if you do soft lock right there, you, you when you run back here, you'll actually hit the trigger, and the dialogue will play it once. But it makes one of the jumps of, uh, after grab start jump pretty hard. So you're gonna want to strafe to the right, right at the start. Um, and again, as always, I recommend watching my inputs to understand what, what exactly I'm doing. So you hold space, strafe to the right. I like to jump about right, uh, about right here. Um, let me see if I can alt tab it. There we go. About right here uh, when I'm just not when I'm when I'm Wonderful. A JP Gamer BR, thanks for the follow, man. Um, when I'm just about to pass over 
the crane. Um, if you jump, you want to, you, you have to work on your jump timing because if you jump too late, he will just clear the entire uh, like uh, beam that you're supposed to jump on afterwards. So you're gonna have to, and if you jump too early, you'll basically bonk it. So you have to, you're gonna have to figure out that timing. Um, it, uh, it's usually right when you're about to pass over the crane, but you're not like actually directly level with it. So this is this is about the time when you want to use your second jump. Yeah, so anyway, um, after you do that jump, we're going to strafe over to the left. So we jump here, strafe to the left, jump again, and then when you do that, you're going to strafe back to the right. So this is all about strafing and lining your jumps up correctly. So you're going to strafe back to the right here, um, strafe back to the left, jump again, strafe back to the right. Um, you don't have to hit this thing to make this next jump. You can actually land right here. And if you do land here, just make sure you double jump early. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, like, as I'm doing it. it this is something that is, is best learned in practice. Not so much from watching. Then we jump here, straight to the right. Jump again, straight to the left. Jump again, straight to the right, land here. Now, this is the this is the first wall kick you have to do. You have two perfect wall kicks you gotta get down. Well, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be frame-perfect wall kicks, but they do have to be wall kicks. So, here, kick. Oh, I see, and that's pretty hard for me to time that after uh, after coming out of a pause screen. So we're going to kick off there, and uh, after you kick off the crane, um, you're going to let the game kind of push you away naturally like it does from a wall jump, and then you're going to straight back to the left here. IMC dropships headed to your location. So, you're gonna so you straight to the right a bit, and then you straight back to the left. Um, that's that, that's generally how you want to do it, just to get the most distance. I'll see if I can get this properly again. And like I said, I'm gonna be loading this quick save over and over. IMC dropships headed to your location. There we go. That was better. I'm probably still not gonna hit the wall. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's it's a, this is a it's a very difficult trick. It's not ha it's not even I mean it's maybe like half as hard as old fastball used to be. If any of you guys are were around long enough to remember that, how like extremely difficult that trick was. I just don't, I'm not getting enough speed coming over here, so that's why I'm struggling with it. This is good. There we go. So you straight back to the right, straight to the left, kick off here. Now once you get here, I'm gonna purposely mantle here. Once you get here, there's there's a couple ways. You're gonna have to approach this. So depending on how you kick off the wall, you can land up here. You can land down here. You can land on the railing. Um, no, no matter what you do, you have to be careful because um, the optimal way, obviously, is to jump straight to this wall over here. Um, but sometimes you won't always have the speed for that, and all, sometimes even if you do have the speed, you won't, you won't be landing in the optimal spot for it. You generally want to land up on top of this black thing, or up on top of here, or uh, you can even land like, uh, you, I, I usually try and land on the rail. You can also land literally directly next to the rail, which is like, uh, it's kind of hard for me to do it right here, but you, there, you see how there's like this little gap right here between the rail and you can actually land like on this. I'm gonna let me see if I can get it. Yeah, you can actually slide off this pretty easily. Um, the, the, tr the reason you want to land on one of these upper sections is because the trigger that you need to hit is is just kind of I wish I could I wish there was some sort of console command I could do to visualize it but it's it's sort of like this box like right here um, it's anywhere over here and that's this box right here so it's possible to make this jump but land too low and then miss the trigger um, so it's 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 important to try and land. I usually want to, you want to aim like above the orange thing. I think it's generally a pretty safe bet. Above the orange thing and like before like one of these lines here. Um, you, you want to get cl as close to the pipe as possible. Um, and you have to be careful when you get to the pipe too because the, the pipe actually has a big invisible uh, hitbox behind it or around it rather that is, is very easy to hit like you see right here. Um, it just kind of extends a bit farther than you would think. So, um, let's do that optimally one more time. IMC dropships headed to your location. Should be able to hit the upper part this time. I don't think I'll be able to. That's fine. 
So this would be one of the areas where I think I went too low. So I definitely went too low. So if I went too low here, I would purposefully like try and jump up higher to hit the trigger as a bit of a safety thing. And we'll know if I soft locked or not because when we come over here, if the this Marvin is there, if the Marvin isn't there, that means we missed a trigger and we soft lock. So um, we'd have to actually retroactively after doing the grab star jump, go back there and hit the trigger. So anyway, so let's uh, let's talk about alternate routes and backup strats. So there's a, there's a there is a safer way to do this um, that doesn't if you don't want to make that big jump and take the risk of uh, you know not getting the. Or get not or take the risk of getting the soft lock. You can actually come over here. IMC dropships added to your location. So let's purposely hit this a bit early. So you'll actually come down here, jump here. And you actually probably want to slow yourself down with S. There. And so that guarantees you hit the triggers. It's not that much slower, and it works out. Um, and again, you can also come over here and get this far, and then just like climb up here, land here, and then just do this the slower way. But, I mean, that's another safe way to do it. It just kind of it just kind of depends on your comfort level and your confidence and your skills. Um, even if you get like, even if you get stopped right here, it's pretty easy to wall run off this thing, and then you can actually just uh, end on the corner. And again, guarantees you hit the trigger and you don't stop lock. And now, if we come over here, we will see the Marvin. And you see, there's the Marvin. So again, the Marvins won't load in if uh, if you soft locked. So um, yeah, the lo lots of different. Uh, I I've talked about this in my previous tutorials, but but the key to being good at this trick and at this level, aside from being good at air strafing, is understanding what your options are, no matter what mistake you make, um, or no matter what situation you're in. It's probably a better way to put that. So like, if you're like, if you're thinking, oh no, I didn't get this fast enough, so you come over here. You gotta slow yourself down, and you make the jump. So there's another example. So let's say you do super fastball, and you've messed up. You're on a really good run, but oh no, I've I've messed, I've made a mistake. Oh, I didn't time my jump well. Oh gosh me, what do I what do I ever do now? So let's say you've messed it up right here. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is don't touch the cranes. Don't move the cranes. Don't touch the cranes. Don't do anything. Cranes are slow. Cr think of the cranes as lava, okay? So starting from right here, this should be able to give you an optimal way to get over to there as fast as possible. So um, starting from here, we'll do it. We'll take a slide hop off here. Come over here. And uh, we'll be, you'll line up next to the scaffolding here. And you're just gonna slide hop off and we're gonna air strafe to the left to hit that pipe. So, yeah, actually, we'll just slide off. Yeah, slide and then jump. Air straight over to the pipe. Pretty simple. Come through here. Oops, don't double jump there because you'll lock your head, like me. Come over to this wall. Hop off here. And this is, you know, you can pretty much improvise this anytime you do it. You don't have to follow this exact route. come down here and again you can go through that building if you want you can go through the building that's okay and then normally this door will be open you can go through the building and come out here jump around come down here in any case you want to get to this platform here and then once you get to this platform you just jump off of it and then you can strafe over to here um, I don't believe you need an edge boost um, I believe it is possible to do it without an edge boost but you're gonna want to have an edge boost and edge boost, of course, is when you jump off the uh, a, a corner at like the last possible time, and it gives you like a speed speed boost comparable to a uh, wall kick. So I'll, I think you I'll, let me just do it without an edge boost here. So it is possible without an edge boost. You just have to be good at strafing. Gamer Yogi, thank you for the host, man. How's it going? Um, why can't you just go all the way from the first thing until you land on the end? I'm not sure what you mean, Flotza, but I will cover. Uh, I will cover why we can't just follow that in a sec here. Um, so once you get down here, um, you'll just slide up off this. You're gonna want to. Oopsie. You're gonna want to come over to this side of the wall. Come over here. You jump to the right. Um, so you can't. You can't jump on the same angled surface twice. But or the same facing surface twice. But you can if it's like in a curve. So we're gonna come around here. Oops. 
Let me wait till I grab the wall again, then we're gonna jump again. And then we'll grab. And then you come up here. And now you're over here. And then once you're over here, um, you can actually just do a slide and then jump off this and then still grab the wall. But it's a it's a really it's that it's a deceptively hard jump. Um, it's a deceptively hard jump, and then I recommend if you're not 100% confident in your air strafing skills, just coming up here, double jump, grab the wall, come around here. So, um, in any case, that is the that is the way to get over here when you mess up fastball. So, um, in, in case you guys are wondering, like, why can't you just jump down here, or why can't you just jump across this thing? Like, why don't why don't you just jump down here? Well, because. So if we come over here, you might be you might be wondering why we don't do this. Because um, obviously this is way faster, right? I mean, you probably you probably already figured it out. It soft locks the entire game. Um, we missed every single trigger that we had to hit all the way through here. And so we'd have to retroactively go back and hit all of them. And so, and no, it's not faster to come over here and then go back and hit the triggers. Um, we have tried that. So it, it's the way we do it is is the most optimized way. Um, the way I showed you is the fastest way to do it with hitting all the triggers. So, hi Splargle, hey Dankerasp, good to see you guys. So um, let's uh, so that's 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 super fastball kind of in a nutshell. It's a trick that requires a lot of practice. You got to be really good at strafing, obviously. And there's plenty of ways to go fast, even if you mess it up, in some way, so... Let me just get this one more time here. And look at that, I messed up, so I'm gonna have to improvise and come down here. Oop, oh, messed up again. Now let's come across here. And so now the next part of the Beacon 3, the big one, is uh, the Gravity Star Jump. There are uh, a lot of different ways to set this up, or not a lot of, there's a few. It seems like most every runner has their own way to do it. Um, Deception has his own, I know Joshua has his own race dance from here. Um, the one that I use, uh, I actually used to throw the Gravity Star and count, like an idiot. Uh, I use the one that Over Zero does. So Over Zero's is pretty simple. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this jump is we're going to be standing here, we're going to throw the Gravity Star right there. When the Gravity Star explodes, it's going to launch us all the way over there and that skips uh, that skips us having to go to the panel and moving the dish over to a place where we can jump to it um, and that also requires us to do some other special dances to get back over there without having a dish in the spot where we can jump to it so um, the, the main part about this setup is that you want to do it okay <laughs> you want to do it in a spot that uh... You want to eliminate as much uh, all, all the setup time that you can. Uh, what, so what I like about this setup is, you know, Deception and other people will tell you that their setup is the best way to do it. I I, I feel do the one that you think uses, uses the least amount of setup time and works best for you. So this one works best for me. So you go here, you surround to the spot, you throw the graph star here, and then as soon as the graph star is in the the highest position, where basically it's when it raises from the wall and it stays in that static spot. As soon as it gets there, you start running and you jump off. So you go here, throw it, start running jump off so I, even I jumped a little early but as you can see this is this is the gist of that's the gist of the jump so let me load a checkpoint here oh that's an annoying checkpoint in any case we'll just run back over here this is what you call a professional tutorial voice I'm surprised it gave it didn't give me a checkpoint the whole time I was over here so let's quick save while we're here all right so once again stand here throw a star here wait run and so like everything else it's going to take practice you do need to be able to strafe to do this um if you do make this mistake though if you do make a mistake and you don't get a proper boost Um, I, I would be able to make it with this one, but for the sake of science, you can land here, and then once you land here, there's a couple ways you can get back around. Um, you can uh, jump here, wall run, and then strafe around. That's that's the fastest way. Um, this that jump, this wall can be kind of finicky, so if you're having trouble with it, you can actually just come up here, and then just kind of jump between these two, 
This is really slow, by the way, so I recommend learning the other way if you can. But this is like an alternate way if you're just not comfortable with that jump. So you come around here, and then boom, here you are. So um, as soon as you're done with that, actually, let me talk about one more thing with the grab star jump. Basically, it does require you to strafe properly, um, and you're gonna want to be careful not to get hung up on the on this fence here. So that's not a fire. That's not a gravity star. So um, I'm gonna wait for that fire star to burn out. There we go. So as soon as you jump, you're gonna want to be strafing to the right. And it's just, you have to make sure you're strafing the entire time, otherwise you're going to end up down there. So in any case, once you get to the module, um, I'm going to put another quick save here. We're going to be slide hopping off here, and then we're going to do that sort of thing to get back. Um, <clears throat> it is possible to start the slide as soon as you grab the module out. So, slide off. There you go. And if you're not confident in doing that one, you can actually just run, like sprint to the very end of the antenna, and then uh, slide, and then slide off. The, the the reason it's important to start doing it immediately is you'll notice that um, the antenna will actually start going backwards. It's sliding into place. So let's see how it's moving here. So if you're not confident with doing what I just did, you can actually just come down here. You want to wait till it stops moving. Because otherwise it's going to eat your momentum. And you get a slide off. Obviously that is much slower. But that is another way you can do it. If you are not 100% confident in your skills yet. So now you're wondering, well how do we get back over here? After we doing the, after doing the grab star jump, how does that work? Uh, it's Fortunately there's a pretty easy way to do it. There's actually two ways to do it. There's a really fast way that I still do not do in runs due to its difficulty. Um... Which actually involves another grab star jump, which would be right here. So this is the other way you can do it. Or, this is the safer way that you'll see me doing pretty much all my runs, just because uh, the, that gravity star jump is so risky. So we're going to come over here, we're going to jump, we're going to uh, jump off this pillar. And then, not mantle ideally, come up here come up here and then we're gonna be uh, basically this you could actually run on this on this wall right here so we're gonna run the wall get an edge boost straight to the left and we're good so not not a whole lot to that pretty pretty simple all the way through um, uh, the gravity star jump obviously is the fastest way but it also uses a, another gravity star and is pretty pretty difficult all things considered like this is a difficult jump to do um, I, it's difficult enough that I don't do it in runs, just because it's so punishing, as you can see if you don't get it, and it ends up being really, really slow. So, that is why I don't do that in runs yet. Um, it's still, still something I'm working on. And so let me see if I can get this the proper way. There is like a kind of a, a, a route, quote unquote, you can say for getting up to the to that stack of beams as fast as possible. There we go. And if you're good, you can actually skip the mantle here. There we go. So, this route back is pretty simple. I don't think it requires a lot of explanation. I just do wall kicks. You gotta be careful not to kill yourself by jumping too far, because you will be building a lot of speed if you're doing wall kicks. So, we're just gonna like, wall kick between each of these. Over here, get an edge boost off. Let's pull out our L-Star, shoot this dude. Shoot the guy that will come down behind us and knock us off. Okay, so once you get here, this is where the beacon fight starts. Hey, Dinosaur D123, thank you for that host, man. I thought it was an auto host, I hope your internet didn't die. So, we we're going to throw the first two gravity stars at the, at the Reaper. I almost called him a Stalker again. Just kind of pepper him. What you said. So these so these few guys we're going to just kind of finish off as they come down. Now once the, once the uh, Stalkers get over here, throw a grab star on him. And I just like to pull out a shotgun. And it takes care of him pretty easily. Um, after that I run over to this right side. Take out these grunts. Usually you can pick up a grenade from him somewhere. These guys didn't drop one. That's fine. We take out these guys next. 
Okay, here's another Stalker. So you're gonna want to kill the Stalkers that are up here because BT's gonna have a hard time with them. BT will take care of any of these enemies that are down here on the front. The ones I'm most concerned with are the next are the Grunts over here on this right side. And then um, any Grunts that spawn on this far right side. And again, BT's normally pretty good about taking care of the, uh, taking care of the Stalkers. So, once the music gets to about this point, if there's no other grunts or anything over here, which there is, unfortunately. God, the hemlock sucks. We're actually going to go to this pillar here and then start climbing. So we're going to take a far jump all the way over here, wedge ourselves in this corner. And now from here, I'm just going to be jumping left and right and double jumping. You can actually do this pretty fast. Whoops. Oh, I messed up somehow. Here we go. Oops. And that is, uh... That's Super Moon Boots and Fastball. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was informative. I know this video was long overdue. I appreciate your guys' patience on that. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.